the past few weeks, we've been sharing on Christian disciplines. Christian disciplines. And uh, looking at Christian disciplines is important to us because what Christian disciplines are is that they are just the practices that are found in scripture that promote our growth as believers and to help us to be more like Christ. So the Christian disciplines are so important for us. You find them all, all over in scripture and they are just meant to, if we practice them rightly, then we are able to go deeper into the knowledge of God. We are able to go deeper into the knowledge of God to know God, to know him, to love Jesus, and to walk in his ways. Now, the disciplines or these practices, they are not separate from the rest of the scriptures, you know? The scriptures are there. All the scriptures are written by God to help us. Because in Romans 8:29, the Bible says, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So we are meant to be conformed to the image of his son as long as we are. Let's read together. It's an early morning. Let's go. For, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So God wants us to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, for us to be conformed to the image of his son, then we have to, these practices help us to do that. First Corinthians 15, 49, uh, also gives us the promises. Let's read together. And just, one, two, and just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. Amen. So as we go through this, uh, as we practice them, then we become more like Jesus. That is why the Bible says, uh, th that is what the saying goes, that some of us, we are maybe the Bible, that the only Bible some people will see. We are the only Bible some people will see by our manner, our way, the way what we do, how we practice things, how we treat people, how we handle situations, so we shall be more like Jesus. Now, the goal of practicing these disciplines is not so much the doing. It's not so, we do them, yes, but the goal is for us to be like Jesus. We practice them so that we are more, more like Jesus. And these practices are both at a personal level you as an individual, me as an individual, but also they are interpersonal. Uh, personal in the sense that we can practice them, we pray alone, we pray together, interpersonal. Yeah, so we practice them individually, we read the word alone, but we also do other things with other people. Now what we do on our individual level is what we call the personal ones, but the interpersonal ones are so important. That is what is practiced within the local church. So you can't sit at home and say you are just doing what is happening in church. You, you ha we have to be together with other believers. You can't just be on the TV or on YouTube following all services for different people all over without being in touch with other believers. So the local church becomes very key. You can't ignore what is happening in the local church. So you have to be there to be there, to, to just participate in the various activities that take place in the church. Now, there are a few dangers of neglecting spiritual disciplines. You lose spiritual sensitivity. You are not very sensitive to spiritual things. That, so if you are not practicing them, it's likely you will lose, you, you will do many things because you are not sensitive to know that this cannot be God or this is not right because you are not doing those uh, Christian disciplines. You are not able to discern God's voice. And then also another danger is 
you don't bear fruit. You are Christian, you are born again, lakini matunda, hatuyoni, we don't see fruits, and even you yourself, you don't see those fruits. You don't bear fruits, you are just there, yeah? So those are dangers that uh, are there if we don't follow Christian disciplines. Now, there, there are many areas where we see the Christian disciplines practiced in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. I will not go into that, but I will just uh, say a few things about, uh, about um, the Christian disciplines that we are following. So far we have done, we, what we have we done? We have handled giving, we have handled prayer, we have handled fellowship, we have handled meditation, we have handled what else? So we, ha worship, yes. so we have handled several disciplines. So today, the discipline we are going to look at is stewardship. St stewardship. And we look at stewardship because it is so, so important. Stewardship as a Christian discipline. We see stewardship in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, there are many examples that we can say that all Christians are called to be stewards. That's why we look at stewardship. First Corinthians 4, 1 to, to 2. First Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. All Christians are called to be to be stewards. Let no man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found faithful. So once we are born again, God expects us to be stewards. That's why stewardship is so important. In 1 Peter 4.10, the Bible says, as each one has received as a special gift employed in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Each one should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards. That's why we are looking at the issue of stewards. And for leaders in the church, Titus 1.7, it tells us for the overseer must be above reach Approach as God's stewards. First, Titus 1 7. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. So we must be good stewards as leaders. And we are all leaders. Once we get served, we are leaders in the church, we are leaders in the family. Now let's look just, uh, when we look at the issue of leadership, of stewardship, you are looking at what God has entrusted to us. First of all, uh, Psalms 24.1, Psalms 24.1 tells us that God owns everything. God owns everything. Psalms 24.1. So God's, the, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. He owns everything, including you and me. Now, God as the owner, he's the source, yeah? He's the source, he's the giver, he's the source. He's the giver of all good things, James 1, 17. And then he's the one to whom we shall give account. We shall account to him, Romans 14, 12. Then he's also the one who rewards us. So God is the source. He owns everything. He's the owner. We are not owners. That is why when he tells you give a tithe, it is his. He owns everything. He owns everything. He's the one who gives us the ability to even get that, whatever we do. Then believers us, we are just stewards. We are stewards. Uh, we can look at it uh, in um, Matthew, no, let's read the short one. Okay. No, we shall read it later. We, no, let's read it now. Matthew 25, 
14 to 30. It's long, eh? but I want us to read it. And Luke 14, Luke 19, 11 to 22. Those are our main scriptures that we are going to use. Again, it will be like a man. This was Jesus Christ. Eh? Again, can we read together? Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another, two bags, to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See here, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So really this is telling us a few things as a steward. We are the ones who receive, you are the receiver, you receive a, the gifts that God gives us. We are accountable and responsible. And we, we are the, the believer is also the one who is rewarded for faithfulness. Yeah, so you are the one who is rewarded for faithfulness. So there are four principles of stewardship and I'll just name them. The first one is God is the owner. That is what we have looked at. God is the owner. And two, is the principle of responsibility. The principle of, so the first responsible is ownership. God is the owner of everything. The principle of responsibility, we as stewards are responsible. We, ha, we are responsible for many things. So some of the things we are responsible for, we are responsible to choose to be in right relationship with God. It is a choice. You have to choose. We are responsible for making decisions 
to know Jesus Christ, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and walk in the ways of God. It is your responsibility. Jesus has died on the cross. He has saved you. He has provided salvation through his blood. It's your responsibility to accept because it is already it's a done thing. It's already done. It's provided for. So you, you are responsible to receive salvation. You, you make a choice. Eh? You make a choice to receive salvation. So make responsibility. You know, just decide to get saved. If you are here and you don't know the Lord, please just decide to get saved. It's your responsibility. You decide to live a holy life. You decide to believe the scriptures. That is your responsibility. God has provided for it. You choose, you make a choice to walk right, eh? because it is by grace. It is not, we don't buy salvation. So it's a choice that we make. So you have to be responsible, receive salvation, and walk in the ways of God. And if you are here and you are not saved, imagine you must be saved. Eh? You have to receive salvation. You have to accept. It is your response. That's why we say the salvation of your parent is not yours. It's, your, it's, it's an individual responsibility. So you have to give your life to the Lord. We can look at that at 1 Corinthians 6, 19. You can write that. Then another one is you are responsible for the use of time. Time. Psalms 90:12. If the media can get that, it will be good. But if they can't, it's okay. You are responsible for the wise use of time. Time is equal. We are all given time, and you are responsible on how to use it. And also, as the parable, we have... Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We have all been given 12 hours. You must decide how to use your time. You have to plan how to use your time. If you don't plan, you plan to fail. If you don't plan to use your time, it will, you, you will just be a failure in life. Yeah? So time, then what, like what we have read today, talents and abilities. You you invest, you steward your, your talents and abilities. God, God will not come to, to supervise you in terms of the abilities he has given you. You have to yourself develop them and use them. Then the resources and the possessions of God has given you, you also are, has to be a good steward of them. Um, you can look at Matthew 6, 19 to 21. And then the other one is our, our finances, very key for us. And then, uh, yeah, our finances, very key for us. Maybe I'll just uh, look at a few of those ones because I imagine they are so important. May I look at them first? They are so important. Uh, I'll just look at time, talents, what we have talked about. Time, Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. So you are responsible for how you use your time. Don't waste time. Don't waste your time. And there are many ways, things you can do. Plan your time, plan your time, plan your time. Then uh, our talents, you develop our talents so that you are able to utilize them well, as we have been told. Then our bodies, our bodies, I'll go to, I'll, I'll just look a bit at that. Um, our bodies, it's important to know for us to take good care of our bodies. God has specifically formed and made our bodies. Eh? 
And the way he created us, Psalms 139, when you read 13 to 16, he said we are wonderfully and fearfully made. So we have to be able to take care of our bodies. In Psalms 50, let's read Psalms 50, 10 to 12, please. Uh, our bodies are unique in that we are created in the image of God. And our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus referred to himself as the temple of God. So Psalms 50, 10 to 12, if you can project it. And for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird and the insects. No, I think I have to put you the wrong one. Just don't project it. Forget about it. Then... Um, so our bodies, we are, we are responsible for our bodies, how we take care of them. It is our responsibility. And we are accountable to God for the way we take good care. We take care of our bodies. And some of the things that we look at when we are taking care of our bodies is we, take, we feed them well. Proper nutrition is important. Good health. You have to take care of your body. The, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so you must feed it well. You must feed right. Avoid things which will make your body weak. You know, things like high sugar, of course, fat, fats, they are not good for you. They will make your body, they will, sugars and fats, they are high. High sugar, high fat intake is very detrimental to your health because most of, the, most of our body enjoys sugar and salt and, and fat eh? or most, most wrong things. You know, just as it's sweet for us, it is also sweet to the wrong things. For example, I can talk of conditions like, let's say, like cancer, because cancer is so common these days, and cancer is just a disease like anything, so we should not fear it. It's our sour, and by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Amen? So, things like that, what you do is, uh, all of us have cancer cells, you and me. It's our sour. You have cancer cells, have cancer. all human beings, we have cancer cells, cells which grow haywire. Okay? But now my cancer cell cells will grow haywire, will grow nicely. You, they will enjoy growing when they are feeding on sugar and fats. Yani is like manure and bolea. Bolea are cancer cells is sugars and fats. That's why you limit, you, it's not that you don't take, but really limit sugars and fats in your body. And they are responsible for so many other things. So that's why you limit it. It's not that it is whatever, but you limit it. So take care, eat a diversified diet, good nutrition is important for, for your body. So use good nutrition to take good care of, of your body. I'll teach you that one on another day. Sinisawa. But it's important to feed well. Really just diversified diet. Fruits, vegetables, you know, cereals, grains, whole grains, whatever. But take good care of yourself. So you take good care of your, of your body. And then another one, as a good steward of your body, there are many things you do, and we all know them, but there's one thing I just want to mention, is that uh, sexual purity. Stewardship of the body also includes sexual purity. So if you are taking good care of your body, it's the temple of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is in you, then sexual purity is not an option. Sexual relations are only to take place within the context of marriage. And we talk of monogamous marriage as, a, as Christians and abstinence out of marriage. Sex during marriage, abstinence out of marriage. Sawa, sawa. 
Sasa kama unaenda kuolewa kesho usifanye sex leo. Sawa sawa. Marriage is the only according to God. And you see when you are taking you are being involved in sexual immorality what you are doing in essence is do you think Jesus is enjoying that the holy spirit is in you is he, is he enjoying what you are doing imagine you are just i don't know what to say but you should not engage in sexual immorality you are make it's like you are making Christ engage in immoral acts will he and if Jesus is in you, please, you stay pure. Then, of course, we talk of stewardship of our money and our possessions, and that is very important because we, we use money for everything, and how we take care of it is important. So let's take good care of it because of the way the Lord wants it to be taken care of. We steward our money and our possession. So in a nutshell, what Jesus emphasizes in teaching on stewardship is that if we don't use what God has given us, we lose it. Like the one with the one talent, whatever you don't manage, you lose it. So please, you have to manage whatever God has given you. And then God expects us to use his talents to increase the kingdom. The Great Commission, what we are entrusted with is the Great Commission. And maybe you can project that, the Great Commission in um, Matthew 28. That is the whole mandate we have been given as Christians. So if we have to use whatever God has given us for the, to, to increase the kingdom and to use our talents wisely, and uh, God... Just know God is going to appear. Jesus, when he comes again, we shall give account of what, what he has given us. We, sh we shall give an account. You and me will give an account. Yeah? Because God expects us to live lives that bring glory and honor to him, and we shall live, give an account of it. So stewardship is just us being able to manage what God has entrusted to us in a way that brings glory and honor to his name. And we'll have to do it in many ways, but um, some of the ways uh, that we do it is that uh, we have to practice, to study, to learn, grow, learn now on stewardship, learn about it, and know how do I go about it. So that you grow, you cannot just grow by listening to a. Uh, 20 minutes sermon. Sawa, sawa. It's not possible. Then the issue of money. The issue of money is talking for most Christians because it causes us, I don't know, but uh, the issue of money, what, um, there are two things related to money. If you want to manage money well, you have to tithe. It is not an option. Two, and we have talked about giving, so I'm not going to talk about it. But key is budgeting. You tithe and you budget. Those are, Miles Monroe said something like this. Eh? Basic stewardship of resources for believers centers around understanding the practice and practicing two financial principles, tithing and budgeting. Herein lie the seas of dominion, the secrets of fruitfulness, increase and filling. Tithing, recognize God as the source of our resources, while budgeting recognizes our responsibility to God to manage those resources. So if you don't budget, if you really budget and you have a problem with money, just come and tell me, I really budget, but imagine these are the problems I have. Nobody who budgets has a problem with money. The rich budget, the poor don't budget. So, so my brothers and sisters, eh? so shall we budget? But the first responsibility is receiving the Lord as your savior. If you are here and you are not saved, 
please just get saved. Just come to Jesus as you are. He will grow you. He will help you all the way. So do we have somebody who wants to get saved today? Maybe you are here and you don't know the Lord as your Savior. Amen. Amen. Pray for our brothers and sisters who are not saved. They'll get saved. You may be here. Are you here? You know you have to, to manage our bodies. Eh? You know I'm going to be 71 next, week, next month on 29th. <laughs> and I know God wants us to be in health. By his stripes we were healed. Amen. We, it's not that when you take good care of your body, now you'll be in health. That is just part of your responsibility, but healing is of the Lord. Jesus paid for it on the cross. So if you are here and you are sick, or you have a health condition, or you have somebody at home with a health condition, mental, emotional, and physical, Jesus took them all on the cross. Our responsibility is to just come to him and ask and receive that healing. So if you are here and you are, you have a, you are sick, there's somebody sick, in your family, mental, emotional, physical, he took them all. Your responsibility is just to surrender to him, cast your burden to him. So if you are here and you are unwell, you can come over. Ministers, please, I know the time is gone, but I think, uh, because I'm going to be 71, Pastor Millicent, when I was going to five minutes, sawa sawa, because of age. Now, let the ministers, ministers, please come forward. Let us, if people are, because people suffer body, because the body is our responsibility. So just come and agree with the ministers. Healing belongs to you because Jesus paid it all on the cross. Our responsibility, we take good care of our bodies, but healing is of the Lord. So just come if you are standing in for yourself for your loved ones, for people you know, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Also, if you are there, uh, you know one of our responsibilities is to be in good relationships. If you are there and there are challenges you are having with your relationships, just come over. It may be relationships with your children. It may be relationship with your siblings, it may be relationship with your spouse. God wants you to be in good, healthy relationships. That is one of the rewards of knowing the Lord. He wants us to be in healthy relationships. Just come over, agree with the ministers, and you receive God. Our, min our choir led us and said that restoration is ours today. So just come and receive that restoration. God wants to restore our health. He wants to restore our relationship. If you have financial challenges, if you have financial challenges, just come. God wants to restore your financial condition. Jesus was made poor that you become rich. So abundance is your portion. John 10:10 10, 10 says, Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly so abundance belongs to you so just come over if there are challenges in relation to your finances you may not have managed your finances well the lord does not condemn you jesus paid it all on the cross for you he was made poor that you become rich so just come and receive restoration for your finances if you have sickness and disease, Jesus paid it all on the cross. God does not condemn you. It's not because you have not eaten right, you have not exercised right. That may have contributed, but God is a God of restoration. And Jesus paid it all on the cross. So just come and receive restoration of your health. Jesus paid it all on the cross. And he took all diseases, not some. They may be mental, emotional, physical. Jesus paid it all. So just come and receive. Receive from the giver. He's the source of the, all good things come from him. So just come and receive what Jesus died on the cross to give us. 
He paid it all on the cross for our salvation, for our healing, our deliverance. What is it that is causing you pain, discomfort? What is stressing your life? Jesus paid it all on the cross. He did it. Our responsibility is just to receive what Jesus died to give us. We don't earn anything. It's not because we have done the right things. It's because Jesus has paid for it. So we receive it freely by grace. It's by grace that we receive. It's not because we have done the right things. It's just because Jesus has paid for us. He has already taken our sins on the cross. He has taken our diseases. He has taken our poverty. He has taken our shame. He took our shame on the cross. So you don't have to walk in shame. You walk in his glory. And because Jesus took our rejection on the cross, healthy relationships is his desire for us. He's a God who restores all. He restores what the enemy has touched. So anything related to touching what Jesus paid for you, just come and receive. Your responsibility is to receive. You are the receiver of what Jesus did. You don't earn it. You just come and receive. That is your responsibility. So just come. If there's a challenge, just come. Jesus wants to minister to you. Jesus wants to restore you. Jesus wants to heal you. He paid for it all. So your responsibility is just to receive. So just come and receive. He came that you may have life and life in abundance. He wants you in healthy relationships. He wants you in good health. Jesus wants you to walk in what he died to give us. We don't have to carry what Jesus carried for us. Jesus legally took it on the cross. You don't have to suffer for it. And just commit yourself to walk right with the Lord. If you are walking in sexual impurity, God will help you. Just say, I'm sorry, Lord. I make a decision, a U-turn. I'm going to walk right. I'm going to manage my body well. And God is pleased with you when he acknowledge that indeed he's the giver. He's able to do for us much more than we think or ask. And we receive by grace. He's the owner of all good things. He gives us freely through Jesus Christ. And we receive them. Our responsibility is just to go forward and receive and walk in them. And as we practice these Christian disciplines, they are not separated one from another. As we practice them, God is assuring us, his word tells us that he will not let us be put to shame. Jesus took our shame on the cross. He will not allow us to be put to shame. So receive what Jesus died to give you. Receive it. It is your responsibility. He can't force it on you. You have to make a decision to receive it. And your decision is what God wants, that you decide to receive accept the sacrifice that Jesus did. If you are in financial problems, he was made poor that you become rich. He, too, he exhausted the poverty curse on the cross. So just come forth and agree with one of these ministers that you are going to walk in the abundance that Jesus died to give us on Calvary. And you will stewardship whatever he has given you well. So let us just come before the Lord freely and receive what Jesus died for us. I am the Lord that he left.